It's time to open up the Nerdy Nomicon this Yay. week, and in this chapter, what are we talking about? Westworld, Rogue One, other stuff, probably Supernatural, I don't know, things! All that and more next on the Nerdy Nomicon. <laughs> Welcome to the Nerdy Nomicon. I'm Robbie. I might be Brooke. I don't know. Maybe I'm not Brooke. <sighs> after after the week of intellectual property we just got done consuming, that is a very Maybe good Maybe I'm statement. a robot. You could be a robot. Robot. Okay, so Holy let's start shit. with Rogue One because that's good. And then let's go to the real one, which is Westworld, because I got lots of stuff to say about Westworld, but um, also I have a... I'm gonna have like six promotional rants. So just <laughs> wrap in. This is gonna be a promotional episode. It's a for very, you. very promotional episode. All right. So Rogue One. Let's Magnificent. do Rogue One first. I mean, I mean, what can be said that hasn't been said? We're not gonna go beat by beat because that's nonsense. Basically, if you guys want something a little bit more beat by beat, uh, the second part, the a nice little Christmas gift for you guys is going to be coming out in about 24 hours, where I sit down with Synthaholics duo and a uh, representative from the Geekiverse. You'll be getting all the Rogue One at that point. But we're just going to talk about our feelings on Rogue One. Amazing. So good. I liked everything about it. I liked the beginning, the middle, the end. I liked all of it. Absolutely. Um, It was so good. I have to say, the ending, when they sacrificed themselves for the cause, I was like, oh, it's so good. And you see Princess Leia, and you're like, oh, it's so good. Basically, it was good. It Basically. That's that's the general thesis of it. I personally thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Saga good. I mean... Mm -hmm. it I, been, still, it should, I agree with Kevin Smith and Mark Bernardin, who also brought this up on Fat Man on Batman. It should have been called Episode Zero. It would have been slid in, per, well, 3.5. Episode because, 3.5. Yeah. They said Episode Zero, realistically, at 3.5. But they've gotten 5. rid of the, um, the, 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 original, the prequels, which I have a whole rant about what we're going to get to. But first, Oh, no. There's, there's still canon. We just choose not to believe it. Well, anyways, that. it should have been called, because they, I mean, it literally, like, ended where New Hopes are. Right. Like, when that comes out in on... DVD. I mm-hmm. want to get it so that I can play it and then p- go literally right into the next one, like on a different TV. Yeah, we'll just, just set like, up what? our TVs one next to the other. We'll just pause, click. I, that's how seamlessly it, it transitions. Like- and the fact of the matter is, I I still prefer Empire Strikes Back. That is always my number one Star Wars film because it's so bleak, it's so good, it's mm-hmm. so gritty, and everything. This really. After thinking about this for just, a good long week, this sl- this falls it. right I below loved, Empire. It's I have that to see good the acting, to me, especially Diego and Felicity. Where like at the yes. end, yes. where they're on the beach and they're basically like, "Well, we're gonna die." Instead of crying, they had hope. They held each other's hand and they were like, "And you know, I would have, I would have bought no, it like if the, they kissed." They were Marshall Erickson at that moment. They're like, "Way to go!" And like, "Way, way to go!" go. I would have bought go. it if they kissed. At I that don't point. think so. I don't think they needed to. I think it. Was, I don't think they needed to, but I would have bought it. Although the internet is now saying that those two uh, guys who ran the Jedi Temple, totally a couple. And I was like, I thought they were brothers. I got that too. Well, they're supposed to be guardians of the wills. I thought they were brothers. Everyone's like, oh no, they're totally lovers. I was like, I thought they were bros. I thought they were like literally like brother, brother. Not like, like, hey, you're my bro. Like, we no more. You like, thought that they were like biological like we brothers? We have the same mother brothers. I, I thought they were brothers. I definitely didn't read that. I did gather that they cousins. were like- I gathered that they were like probably raised together type deal, like as close as Han and Chewie, but you know, um, different yeah, circumstances. The internet has made them lovers because the internet has made everyone gay. Well, the internet tends seriously, to shit if you're people a dude, seriously. If you're a dude and you're friends with another dude on mm-hmm. the internet, you're gay. Even D- Dean and Sam Winchester are gay, and they're brothers. They're literally, they're literally, they literally, they literally, they've right literally there. made jokes about it on the damn show. It's so prevalent. They've been like in the episode in season. Four, I think, where they first discover the fan fiction, and they're like, they're Dean girls, I think that is four, there are yeah. Sam girls, and there are Dean and Sam girls. And Dean goes, "What? We're brothers? <laughs> Do people know that? We're brothers." Now, I so. may not subscribe to it, but Castiel, as Castiel much as I don't Dean love it, are lovers. I get it. No, I Castiel get and that. Dean are lovers, like straight up lovers. And I have to just say really quickly because I said I would uh-huh. shout out to my uh, my dark side of the fan fiction people on Wattpad. I said I would shout out to you so i am hello uh thank you for listening and they literally we have this conversation on the forum all the time right. but they are lovers i actually today they put up a whole bunch of memes very graphic memes of them like the blowjob one. Oh, sweet mother of god hilarious um stop with the wincest dude 
Uh, it's not Winchester. It's between Cass and Dean. Oh, it's between Cass and Dean. Well, that's different. It's between Cass and Dean. That's different. That's different. I'm, my mistake. Even my Jensen mistake. Eccles has been like, no, yeah, they're totally a couple. Like they just <laughs> won't put it on the air, but they're totally together. But that has nothing to do with what we were talking about, which is Rogue One. For those who like Star Wars, Rogue mm-hmm. One was amazing. So yes, I completely agree. Rogue One. Absolutely amazing. It had everything that I wanted to see. Adat's actually walking for the first time since Empire, mm-hmm. uh, which, by the way, speaking of people on message forums and everything like that, a uh, bunch of people trying to argue my Star Wars knowledge. ATAT stands for All Terrain Armored Transport. It stands for Adat over there. It it stands for that too. Yes, it, it stands for definitely. Stands They're for not that real, too. so it doesn't mean anything. But this movie had everything that it I did, wanted. Nothing that I didn't. We did get a lightsaber, but yep. we didn't get Jedi, which I'm fine with. You know what? I don't need everything in Star Wars. I was, like, Wars. Any Jedi. I was So was like, I. Eh, so was I. I didn't really miss them. It, it had everything that I wanted. I don't always need a Star Wars story. And I know that a lot of people didn't care for the movie because of that. How was it I not a Star Wars story? A Skywalker story. had stars and wars. There was more war in this than any of the Star Wars. Frankly, how was there, there wait, how, I'm sorry. Are you people stupid? How was there no, how was there no Starwalker in it? Forget, or Skywalker. There was freaking Darth Vader and true. Princess Leia. There were two Skywalkers, you dumbasses. True, but it Look didn't, sharp. it didn't follow them as far as like a main character. You don't need to follow them. I agree with you. They're not that interesting. Well, Luke, Luke was pretty bad. Basically, toast. Okay, he's the toast that you put Han on. He's the toast. Jesus, you put the I can't rest even really. Ar- I can't really even argue with that. I mean, I I love me, put, me some Luke Skywalker. Let me put the saga but... into like into perspective. Okay, Luke is the bread. Uh huh. Well, he is kind of Wonder Bread. Yeah. Okay, he's boring. And then <laughs> Han <laughs> is the eggs because eggs are delicious. Uh huh. Chewy is the cheese because that's good for everybody. And, and Leia, Chewy. And Leia is, I don't know, like the hollandaise sauce. I don't know what you put on eggs. Basically, I put, I put like, um, I put, what do I put? You I, basically just built Eggs Benedict. Yeah, so the Star Wars is Eggs Benedict is basically my point. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Starting with Luke. But that was not my promotional rant. I do have a promotional rant, so let's, let's wrap up Rogue One. Because I, I, the reason I, there's a big reason I liked Rogue One okay. that I need to explain. But we need to finish up. So say your final words about Rogue One. Final words about Rogue One. Absolutely incredible. Yes, we just gave you a whole bunch of spoilers. Uh, but to be frank, it was already in the... It's come out a week ago. If you haven't watched it by now, you're not going to see it. it. It's also... There's the word spoiler in the title for this episode and in the you know show notes. You knew what you were getting into, People, okay? You need to see this movie. This is, if you're a Star Wars fan at all, you need to watch this movie. This is 2016. Movie. We have Twitter, Facebook... BuzzFeed and Donald Trump is our president. Spoilers are the least of your fucking problems. It's true. Get over spoil. Nobody cares about spoilers. Stop making such a big deal about spoilers. And on the subject of the Empire, all I'm going to say is at least Emperor Palpatine had some sort of, you know, political background before he became the Emperor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an actual senator before he became Emperor. That's the thing that's so crazy. The evil dictator in star wars has more political background than our current evil dictator not barack obama he's the man i'm gonna miss him if he leaves office saying bye felicia i'm gonna be like greatest president of all time drop the mic bye felicia um but he actually the evil emperor in star wars has more of a political background than donald trump just think about that guys our yep. current darth sidious motherfucker has seriously more political background but that's not important point of the matter is i don't like the prequels nobody rogue likes the prequels. one saved it and this is why and i think a lot of people will agree with me but i really need to explain some to you take us i there. I am not the world's biggest Star Wars fan in the sense that, like, I had seen it before the prequels came out. But you have to understand, the prequels, right. the first prequel came out, I was only, like... I was 13, I so was only, you were like, what? 11. 11, 10, or 11? So, I mean, you have to understand, I didn't have 30 years between the end and the beginning. Right. I basically had only ever seen Star Wars because my brother watched Star Wars, and he didn't even really like Star Wars that much. He was more of a Star Trek guy and, like, an Aliens guy. He liked Star Wars, but, I mean, there was other things he liked better. Right. He did, like, the extended universe, um... He had this really cool book. I've never seen it since. We were at every single extended universe character at that moment. It was like this. I don't know whatever happened to it. It was like this. It looked like a freaking atlas. A compendium of Star Wars knowledge. I mean, keep in mind, this was like 95 Star Wars, so probably not as big. But anyway, it's not important. Mm. So when I saw the prequels, I kind of like didn't know all the background of Star Wars because I'd only seen Star Wars like twice. Right. And the whole time, all I kept thinking is like, I think I'm on the Empire side. Here's why. I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, but um, George Lucas made the Jedi's so fucking shady. 
Okay, first and foremost, the Jedi Council makes no sense. Why is the Jedi Council there? They what? This is what the Jedi Council seems like: a bunch of people who think they're smarter than everybody, going to the going to actual senators, people actually running the country. Oh no, 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 sweetie, you don't understand the Force. We got this. The galaxy, not the country. Sweetie, sweetie. It's adorable that you guys think you're running shit, but we actually have magic. So you're going to just, you're going to do what we say. Like, they seemed really catty, too. Like, that was the other thing I was really confused about. Like, in the the original saga, like, Yoda's like this fun little puppet man. But in the, like, in the, like... In the freaking prequels, it was like the house, the the real housewives of Tatooine. Like they were so fucking catty. Coruscant, come on. Whatever, they were so fucking catty. You never say a bad word about Tatooine. Anakin's already said them all. But you know what I'm saying? They were so fucking catty with each other. You felt like, and like the other thing is, is like it made well, the big thing that made no sense to me was like they're like, oh, we can't. They were talking to Qui Gon Jinn, and he's like, oh, I will, t- I will raise Anakin. You know, I will make him my Jedi person. And they're like, oh no, no, you already have a pad one. You know why that doesn't make any sense? They have a fucking pad one school. And he's 10. Like, you see the Padwins that he murders later in movie three, and they're like eight. Mm. They can't slip a 10-year-old in there, and he's supposed to be like the most powerful Jedi any of them have ever seen. I think he'll catch up. I think it'll be fine. So, like, that's made no sense to me, because, it like, they were like, oh, no. You know, like, um, we can't, you can't train him because he's too old. And it's like, he's 10. I think it'll be fine. And also, you have a fucking Padawan school. Like, I'm confused. Mm. Also, the, um, the Senate was really bad at their job like they were really stupid like they were only just fighting each other at least when the emperor came in good or bad he cleaned shit up he cle- he he's like you know what fuck this noise and he actually did unite everything so i know he didn't do it on purpose i know that george lucas probably didn't mean to do it on purpose but he made the senate seem completely um incompetent yeah he made the jedi seem shady as fuck yeah. Like, so shady. And, like, he also contradicted himself a lot. Where it's oh, like, God, yeah. It was supposed, all over the place. It was supposed all to be a religion, place. but then you had to have metachlorians. This is the thing. It's never really explained what, the, how you become a Jedi. When I first saw the original trilogy, I thought becoming a Jedi was a lot like being a professional athlete. You either had the talent or you didn't. There's no there's no in between. You either can use the force or you can You're either force sensitive or, or you're, you're not. not. So you yeah. find someone who's also sense sensitive. They t- train you and then you go off and live your life. And that's the way for th- about 30 years yeah. in Star Wars, the original trilogy, yeah. and in all of the extended universe for 30 years... That's how it was. Like being a plumber. For 30 like, years. Or something like that. Or like being a, being a professional athlete. You either right. are force sensitive or you're not. That's all there is to it. There's none of this magic. But there's also none of this religion nonsense either. Like I understood there was probably a council. I figured before everything was destroyed, there was a lot of them. Mm. But I thought there was a lot of them in the way that's like you'd all hang out and get brunch. I didn't think there was like a freaking council. So like they all like you found someone who was force sensitive. They trained you. You went off and became a Jedi for a few years. You found someone who was force sensitive. You trained them. Mm-hmm. They went off. And, and I don't understand why you could only have one at yeah, a time. Yeah, you have your apprentice, your master. Yeah. Or the apprentice, the knight, the master, and then the grandmaster. Yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. the KKK. That works out. Anyways. <laughs> I said grandmaster, not grand dragon. Sure. Why does the KKK have all the cool titles? Because they're racist bastards. I want to be a Lord High Wizard or whatnot, but I can't because it's fucking racist now. Fuck you, KKK. We are not fans of the white supremacist group. No, KKK. and I'm a I'm a pasty face fucking peckerwood, and I hate the KKK. You're, really that. you're you're very Italian. I am. <laughs> Anywho, that doesn't have to do with anything. Point of the matter is, so that's what I thought, and then it turns out. But the thing is, the the prequels also like contradicted themselves way too many times. Like, oh yeah, there's a Jedi school. Then why are there? master like then why is someone like Qui-Gon important also it kind of doesn't seem like Anakin ever went to Jedi school because he's always been with Obi-Wan because they're talking about all these crazy adventures they went on also way to tell not show they couldn't have shown us any of their wacky adventures like they're talking about all these fun adventures they have we don't even get a fucking flashback they're like hey remember that one time on that one place where that really cool stuff happened I do remember that let's sit in this elevator you know, that is one situation I never even thought about that before. And I love the Star Wars movies. I hate the prequels, but I love Star Wars. I never thought about that before. That's a good point. That is a fucking bottle episode just waiting to happen. Those exactly. flashback like, episodes like, think, that you get in every single sitcom yeah. ever, that's what we need. I feel like it was like, hey, Holy remember shit. that time I saved you from that place? And and he's like, yes, I do, Attican. And he's like, that was cool, Obi-Wan. He's like, it was cool, Attican. Dun, dun, dun. Why are we walking like this? Yeah, it was like so awkward. But anyway, so it's like, so I know he didn't do it on purpose, but like the Jedi Council was really like, first and foremost, they're also supposed to be these super powerful knights, but their power is like never really established. Like, do they work for the Senate? Are they their own thing? Because the Senate's like, are you going to come fight with us? And they're like, we would, but 
uh, we just don't want to. And it's like, okay, well, then why do you live on our planet? Like, who are you? I don't understand. He didn't, like, he made the Jedi's way more confusing. Now, I know we're going to get emails by all you people who are going to try to correct me. I don't care. It's not real. The thing is, if it didn't happen in the movies, then it didn't happen. I don't buy all this. I don't know. And the thing is, I no. mean, off microphone a couple of days ago, I actually did explain to you no. what the 30 years of canon actually was supposed to be. The problem is... All of that stuff about how the Jedi's are the peacekeepers of the galaxy, how the Force is their religion, damn all of this, their job. all of this stuff was essentially abolished by the trilogy movies by having their main temple on Coruscant, which was the political capital of the galaxy. To me, it just immediately sets up a religious oligarchy, which is everything that the Jedi the stands. That's exactly the thing. It's like the Jedi became to. like an, that's what it, it felt like. They were a religious oligarchy. Yeah. I get why the Emperor wanted to get with them. I, I was like, no, I'm on the dark side because this is what is up. The Jedi seem like a religious oligarchy who only fight when it helps them. They're bitchy and mean because none of them are allowed to get laid because I guess you have to be celibate to be a Jedi because that makes sense. Um, and you have to apparently oh, and also, go into the temple when you're like fucking first born. Ten years old, you're too young. Luke was 19. Come on, get your old. shit together. Yeah, too old. Get um, your shit together. They also like kidnap children, which is they do, which is weird because isn't that exactly what the dark side does? They kid like that's what Finn says and yeah. A New Hope or not? I'm sorry, Force Awakens. So, anyways, they're also a, clearly a religious oligarchy. And they all worship a little green guy. So, you know, that's weird. Well, all right. I, again, I'm, I'm falling into the trap of trying to defend it when, you know but what? I, also, it, the other thing that made no sense, and, and Robbie has since informed me this was just a prequel thing that had never been established before. The whole, like, you're not allowed to love, you're not allowed to have relationships. Why? The thing that is, has never the reason been being is, there. The reason that doesn't make sense is you could argue, well, it's a religious thing. And, you know, a lot of religions are still about, okay, fine. But then what the fuck do the Metachlorians have to do with anything? Right. Because then you made it completely scientific, in which case that makes no sense sense because right. you'd want people with high metachlorian counts to mate and procreate and have more metachlorian sensitive children so the thing i don't understand is it's like is if it's a talent like being a sports athlete like you either are force sensitive or you're not getting married doesn't make you a worse football player i mean I, people will argue it does but it doesn't having children doesn't make you a worse hockey player except for in the sense that like the reason you get worse at being a hockey player as you have children is you're getting older so your body just starts to break down it has nothing to do with like the fact that you had kids it has to do with the fact that you're just getting old yep which is why people like Yaramir yager is just fucking astounding i yeah. mean homeboy's still in the game and still well, exactly so up the to goals. me i never understood like why jedis couldn't have children because mm-hmm. if anything i'd feel like you'd want as many force sensitive people as possible to have children children because right. they're because i thought it was like it, they've established that it's genetic but it's not genetic it's magic but it's not ma- that's the it either is science or it's religion it can't be science magic religion that's nonsense and we're talking to you l ron hubbard it's just no they're either metachlorian sensitive in which case we just lost all of our scientology I, listeners the two of them that listened by accident <laughs> oh there's a kid that i work with named matt do not recruit him because he is very malleable anyways <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. I love you, Matt, if you're listening. Um, anyways, no, but listen, if it is Metachlorians and it's science, mm-hmm. right, then it shouldn't matter what you do with your body. Right. Because if you- The genetics you, will you win either, out. You're either force sensitive or you're not. And if it's magic, then the Metachlorians don't make any sense and the whole thing is stupid. Right. But again, I still don't understand. Like, I get that he was trying to go with, like, a religious order and there are a lot of religious orders that are celibate, but the problem is, is it's not- it doesn't, to me, it felt more like a philosophy, like Buddhism, than it did like a religion. So to me, it's like, I just don't, I understand if you choose to want to be celibate to really like study. Like I get like Yoda is celibate, but I also don't feel like there's any more of Yoda's kind. I feel like if there was girl Yoda's, he'd be God, I would want to see more of Yoda's kind though. I feel like if there was girl Yoda's, he'd be like, ooh, have sex mm. with you, I will. Mm. Naughty you look presumes you have exactly mm. the thing is i don't think yoda is celibate by choice i get the impression he's the last of his kind like who's he gonna have sex with a, a wookie Nipples. i'm sure it's out there areolas a jedi craves not these things yes they do i'm sorry a yeah, jedi yes craves they do all the pussy, and and that's another issue that i have right there you brought up the children aspect of it and that's all well and good that's fine that's a very valid point my number one issue is encouraged not to love which that to me, awesome. well, to me, it nerfs a Jedi's ability, the light side of the force, the good side of the force, the loving side of the force, which is basically fostered through the original trilogy of movies. Mm-hmm. And then the prequels come out, 
you know, you're too t- you're too close with your mom. You love your mom too much. That's going to lead down to yeah, the dark was side. That also that you can't fall in edible. love with her. You can't have a crush on her because that'll lead to the dark side. No, that nerfs your ability. You telling him that shit was probably the self fulfilling prophecy that turned Anakin into Vader in the first Anakin place. Anakin also was clearly had weird Oedipal issues. Like he just didn't have a dad. So why did he not have a dad? Why couldn't he have a dad? That's so weird. Oh yeah, I magically got pregnant by magical Metaclorians. You made yeah, Vader. There was Jesus. no father. No bull. No, fuck you, George Lucas, turning Anakin into Jesus, immaculate conception. No, no, fuck you. Why couldn't Lucas. he have a dad? Like, why couldn't he just have like a weird dad he never saw again? Let, let's just call Darth Sidious, aka the Emperor, his dad. He came down, drugged me, had a little tussle in the That's Sith. Probably what happened. Why don't we just say that? Okay, I've written the canon. Also, That's feel, what happened. Uh, also, the whole, I'm like, retconning Phantom Menace. I feel like um. Uncle Ben and Aunt Beru were thrown in by accident. Like, they needed to throw them in to, like, establish them, but they have, like, no point to that. Again, them. you're talking prequels, yeah, right? I'm yeah, I'm like, okay. Because they talk about Vader, like, in the saga. Like, they know him really, really well. Like, oh, he's right. so much Vader. Right. They met that guy twice. They don't know shit about him. That'd be like if my cousin, who I haven't seen in 10 years, hands me his children, mm-hmm. and then I'm, like, talking to him. Like, I talk to Elliot. Like, Elliot, I know your father. You have so much of him in you. Like, how would I know? I've met that guy like twice. Now, see, there's there's an area where Rogue One actually kind of helps it out a little bit, mm-hmm. okay? Because they, obviously, at least Uncle Owen knows that Anakin became Vader. Yeah. I mean, that, that much is pretty clear by watching the prequels. Mm-hmm. The thing is, we have never seen Vader as Darth Vader be a throw down and tussle no, badass. No, we that, but why would Uncle Ben but, know that? But he's busy, that's... He's busy oh, farming saw, moisture, man. Robbie. He doesn't... And drinking blue milk, yeah. He's not paying attention to what's going on. He's farming moisture. All I'm saying is Rogue One showed us in that last five minutes why Vader is the biggest badass in the galaxy, and that's what I've always wanted to see. No, he did. Now he did. I get why, how they shared that look. I get that, but still, not enough Uncle Ben... At all. The well, point of the matter is, before, because we've talked about this for too or long. Or Uncle Owen. The reason Uncle I ben? like... What? I don't know why I was kind of Uncle Ben. Either. I was going to say he's busy farming. Uncle rice. Owen. I was getting Ben Kenobi and no, Uncle I Owen. Gotcha. You know I gotcha. I gotcha. I saw For all you Star there. Wars people that are going to write to us, just don't. Go go outside and look at the sun. There's not two of them. You're going to be surprised. Spoiler, if you go outside, there's only one sun. Um, or watch Labyrinth. That's a good time. David Bowie. Anyways point of the matter was r.i.p david bowie r.i.p anyways the point of the matter is like i feel like rogue one made it better yeah. because the prequels made me root for the empire because the emperor might have been an evil guy although mm-hmm. he didn't really seem that evil he seemed more shady at most he seemed in between like little finger and like not little finger uh little finger <laughs> and like um, Tyrion Lannister, like really smarter than the rest of them, and kind of manipulating. Are you everybody. talking uh, prequels, Emperor? Yeah, or... prequels, Emperor. Right, pre- that... Prequels, Emperor. No, I'm talking about I the prequels, can, Emperor. I can get he down just with that analogy. Like a yeah. mix of like Littlefinger and like Tyrion Lannister. I can like, get his down with that. Didn't analogy. really seem that bad. It was more mm. like the Senate is ridiculous. I mean, look at how long they were fighting over like costume colors. Like, they were too busy painting up the queen with, like, all this shit. Well, that was the Trade Federation, and I agree. They were too busy painting up the 14-year-old queen with every gem in the universe and, like, looking at the freaking ETs. And another issue that I have is the establishment of Naboo. Frankly, if you wanted us to start feeling, if you wanted us to, if you wanted to punch us in our nostalgia gut and whatnot, you should never have made princess or queen excuse me queen amidala the queen of naboo you should have given her a more established planet like alderaan at least then yeah, why not make her we'd queen of alderaan? Ca- because then we care even more when no, alderaan is destroyed made in new her hope 14 and made attican nine i agree none of us are going to get over that because attican clearly has mommy issues and that was always creepy to me now i'm totally cool with the fact that they established a matriarchal society where she's the queen well, and stuff fine. like that she will paint her face no man may have her. i also feel like natalie portman was drunk during those movies. Like, oh, God, watch yeah. her acting in those movies and watch her acting as an adult now. It's like, she was like, I'm just getting a paycheck. I don't even want to be here. I'm just getting a paycheck. Like, yeah, she had the Twilight thing going on like, before Twilight was a thing. Oh, my God, Anakin, thing. I love you so much. Look at my hair. Also, she was just, like, just brushing her hair in three. Someone made a really good point. There's no books. Because this queen, senator, brilliant woman is all of a sudden just like, I hope Anakin comes home. Look at my hair. It was like, <laughs> do they give her a lobot? Oh my god, is that the twist? Did they give her a lobotomy? Yes. Like, 
twist. Twist. So anyway, so back to what I was saying, like the prequels actually made me be like, the Senate is ridiculous. They're too mm. busy fighting over nonsense. Right. They actually, tr- I mean, the emperor didn't even have to har- try that hard to trick them into giving him their powers. He was like, oh, guys, no, I don't want, I don't want to take this. Hey, mock that all you want. We just got done with the 2016 election. And I know it's, I know it's the same thing that Julius Caesar <laughs> did. But these are supposed to be much smarter people. And, but the thing is, they were all busy fighting over like, I don't know, like silk or whatever and then like and the jedis are clearly an evil religious oligarchy that are just waiting to take over also they're really bad at their jobs how did they not realize that was coming like the clone, clones are all like initiate protocol seven and then like all the jedis like oh no now i'm dead and 40, it's like, 66 they're all like none of you had the force like did the force turn off that day was like the force being like fixed the wi-fi connection was probably down <laughs> The Force Wi-Fi connection was down. But anyway, so it kind of seemed like the Emperor did a good job. He was kind of like, I've literally united everybody. Like, mm. go me. I'm awesome. I still kind of don't understand why they were rebelling. I feel like that's one part of the story that's never... Because they've never properly established what happened after the Emperor took over and, like, what happened in between Luke's time, because that's 18 years. Right. And we just got the last, like, two. I feel like that's an important story that needs to be told, is, like, from when the Emperor took over... Okay, so the day Vader becomes Vader to the beginning of Rogue One, what happened? Because I feel like that's why you should feel for the Rebels, and that story has never been told, at least in the movies, because I kind of don't get what the Rebels are fighting for. I still don't get what the Rebels are fighting for. I see your point. However, looking at the actions of the Empire, I definitely understand. I'm not saying they're not shady bastards. I'm just saying... Hell, in Rogue One alone, you essentially have the Star Wars version of Oppenheimer creating the Death Star. They're shady bastards, but... We have real life emperors that are creep. Kim Jong Un. North Korea is scarier than the Empire. Like that, I North understand. North Korea is the Empire. Like Russia is. Sc- there are a couple explain, of white helmets away from stormtroopers. No, let me over explain there. to you guys. No, they're not rich enough. <laughs> if I had to pick between living in the Empire and living uh-huh. in Russia, I'd pick. Putin scares the crap out of me. That guy is a Bond villain. We're gonna find out that guy's from West Westworld. Because that possible. guy is so evil. It's possible. I mean, so to me, it's kind of like, look at what's going on in Syria right now. That's way scarier than anything we've ever seen in Star Wars. So to mm-hmm. me, it was kind of like, what are they rebelling against? They have food. They have water. Who cares? Like, so I feel like that's the story that needs to be told is after, we'll just say after all the Jedis are murdered and Rogue One, that I don't, because I don't understand what the Empire is doing that makes them so bad. Mm-hmm. It's just always been assumed, like, you're just always supposed to be on the, the rebel side because they're rebels. But to me, I'm kind of like... I don't. I mean, you know who else were rebels? The Confederates in the Civil War. I'm not on their side either. True. Um, on the counterpoint to that, you know who else were rebels? The Founding Fathers. If you're British, they don't even really learn about that war. That's true. So, I mean, I think it was really established that you're supposed to be on the rebel side from the crawl in episode four. But they never give you a reason why. And they why. just refer to it as the evil empire. You're right. Like, um, and I'm saying this see as somebody a lot of who's the atrocities. Not, I'm, not, I'm saying this as somebody who's not blinded by, like, I wasn't alive during the time. Right. And no one in my family talked about it with the reverence of, like, the way some people talk about Star Wars. Like, it's the greatest film of all time. And it's like, it's good. Let's... It ripped off a lot of stuff from a lot of other people. Like, it's good. Let's take it down a notch. Beowulf, for one. Uh, Flash Gordon and Star Trek. Yeah, that's... It's just Flash Gordon meets Star Trek. <laughs> it's Lord of the Rings in space. I mean, let's not Basically, get crazy. Basically, yes. Um, so I guess I've always been like, but why don't we like... I've still never gotten a reason. Like, I get why we don't like the First Order. Because mm-hmm. those people... I feel like in one movie, J.J. Abrams was able to be like, oh, no, those people are fucking crazy. Right. But, like, I feel like in three, six movies now... George Lucas was never able to give us why we don't like it. And always, everyone's like, well, Vader was such a badass. I'm like, Vader literally stands around having monologues. And then in the second movie, he like starts feeling for his children. And then in the third movie, he's basically a pussy. Like, he becomes a dad in movie three. I, I feel like they should be having wacky barbecues. Now, the one thing I will give Rogue One on both sides of this is... I. I'm sorry, but you saw a lot more atrocities of what the Empire is actually doing in I Rogue One. Yes, I mean they were. Killing I mean, how a do lot you uh, really? How do you not guess they nuked the uh, religious okay, city on Jeddah? They did, but that's only once they got the dark, the Death Star. What were they doing before the Death Star? Like, I feel like the the, the rebels were all like, "Oh my God, we have to take them down." I'm like, they haven't even built the Death Star yet. Like, now, what are they doing, Rebbe? I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm mm-hmm. saying I don't know what. No one has ever bothered to tell me the 18 years from when. The Jedi all die to when Luke becomes on his journey. Mm. No one's ever bothered to tell me what happened. It's everyone's like, oh, no, no, just don't, just trust us. It was bad. <laughs> now, they want to show me freaking space holocaust. I'm on your side. 
because the Nazis deserve to die. You want to show me like high taxes? I'm kind of like two <laughs> percent increase on your tea. Two percent increase on but water. You're a rebelling empire. No, I mean like what did they higher taxes? Did they not like make? travel easier like what did they do now the cool thing to me in rogue one that they did and i i absolutely love this is with the uh, introduction of saw Gerrera into the cinematic universe because we've seen him in star wars rebels i love the fact that you saw an absolute fanatic that's too far gone even for the rebels like he is a flat out terrorist and i love to see that dissidence as well i thought that was brilliant to show that there was yeah. somebody that's fighting against the the Empire that's just way too fucking crazy and off the chain even for the rebels. He's the far I thought left. That, yeah, he's, he's the, the far, far left. lefters. Like, this is that's what right. happens if people get too far to the left. They that's go right. crazy. They basically become the far right. That's basically the point. Yeah, Essentially. Everyone gets crazy. Essentially. And I love the fact that he was like a different version of Vader because he's like half machine and as he was, well. He was actually black. And, and actually black and had a breathing apparatus just like Vader. Yeah, I think that was the, the point. But anyways, mm-hmm. um, that's so, and y'all, we're going to get, if uh, Star Wars people are listening to this, please don't send me mail because I'm not going to read it because I don't care. Um, you're going to be like, no, no, this is what happened. No, this isn't what happened. If it didn't happen in the movies, it didn't happen. It's like the opposite of Harry Potter's where if it didn't happen in the movies, read the damn book because mm-hmm. the books came out first. If it didn't happen in the movies, it didn't happen. Don't show me the, well, if you read book 47 of the Chronicles of the Jedi, it's just, like, no. I don't have time for that. I have a child and a job and a life. I don't have time to read 47 fucking books about what happened to some dude named Steve. I don't care about Steve's Jedi journey. Fuck you, Steve. I, on the other hand, do care about Steve. And if you want to get in touch with me and tell me all the reasons that Brooke's wrong, I'm wrong, or that we're right, you can find us at Artful Gremlins on Twitter and Instagram, or just send us okay. an email, artfulgremlin at gmail.com. And now we're done with Star Wars, and we're on to the main event, the greatest TV show of all time oh, ever. Oh, take us there, Brooke. Westworld. Holy, Holy fuck, what is this show? Westworld was the greatest show of all time. We're going to quickly describe it, and then I'm going to give you guys my theories. The first thing I need to say about Westworld before we mm-hmm. start anywhere, mm-hmm. someone needs to call John Connor, and someone needs to call him fast. Someone needs to get John Connor over to Westworld. And again, the word spoilers is in the show title. So if you're going into this and you were already pissed off about us talking about Rogue One and everything like that, what do you think is going to happen with Westworld? So spoilers if you've everywhere, ever, okay. man. No, 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 no. This one doesn't even count as spoilers. The movie came out in 1976. True, but this is so far different than the movie. But it's still robots. Yes, yes, The yes. TV show has been out for like, I think two months, three months, something like that. I just wrapped up. If you didn't fit, and if you were somewhat interested in Westworld and you didn't look up the original movie and you didn't realize it was robots, that's on you. Agreed. But anyway, so. Completely. Holy crap. The, the show was not linear, which was crazy. This show, it I felt still, like. I'm to, still not exactly sure of same the Same here. Like, there are certain timelines. I think Maeve's timeline is pretty much solid. I think so. Her timeline is happening at the same time as, like, um, Ford getting shot. That's is all it? happening. Yes, that's all happening at once. So what I loved about this show is it's like because she talked to Bernard. She brought Bernard. You're right. Back. You're right. The show is like the movie Westworld meets Battlestar Galactica. It's like Inception. It meets Inception with a little bit of Dark Souls thrown in there as well, just because of the nonlinear storylines. Meets I mean, the Terminator. And much love to Dark you Souls. You missed the freaking Terminator. And, and the Terminator, yes. Oh, before we finish, can I talk about my, my favorite fan theory? Yes. Jurassic Park was actually the first world. Because this is also written by Michael Crichton. Written by Michael Crichton, and she did talk about, at one time, dinosaurs, like giant monsters, like roamed the earth and then they failed. I have a feeling uh, when John Hamm and couldn't make Jurassic Park work, the Del- Delroy's company bought it, and then they also bought started buying up these worlds. So oh, I have a fuck. feeling Jurassic Park is the same place. I love that theory. I love I that would, theory. I would not be. Sh- I mean, obviously, probably not because they they're trying to make Jurassic Park like a franchise. Right. But in my mind, they are the same. I love that. And I can't Great wait. Theory. Obviously, for those of you who don't know, you see you see um Samurai World, and you see like. And obviously, in the original, there was like Roman world and all this stuff. Yeah, I want to see all. There was the something worlds. like at least fifty worlds. I want to see all the other worlds. Like, I have a theory for what I think is going to happen next season, but I'm going to talk about this season first. Yes, I think the saddest character out of them all is Teddy. I feel bad for Teddy. I feel like Teddy's character. I feel like some people might think he's pointless. I don't think he's pointless. I no. feel like he's there to be Dolores's witness at all times. He'll always have Dolores's back because he's Dolores's witness. And I feel like he is going to play a much bigger role in the further seasons. I think he's going to try to be the benevolent half of her evil. The yin to her yang. I think he's going to try to pull her back. I, I think agree. Maeve is going to be kind of like the Raelian. The She's kind of like Moses. 
she's the one who's going to try to like I think she just wants to free them from their bondage I don't think she wants to kill people I you think know, she just wants to make them I think Dolores wants to kill them I think that was Ford's plan all along though was to take the park down again to reference um, Fat Man on Batman they said it you warned me about it because you knew a lot of what was going on before I even sat down to watch the first episode I never really thought that you guys were going to be onto something the fact that the madam's storyline was the most compelling story arc in here i mean and honestly i'm sitting down here i'm in love with the madam black storyline mave's storyline holy shit i think mave is like oh my god i don't know mave is not moses mave is like (sighs) mave is more like sarah connor (laughs) no uh she's looking for (laughs) like the anti sarah connor reverse sarah connor she's looking for her child Um, but um no i feel like mave is more like um how do i put this she's more like well, no, I have the perfect analogy, but I can't think of it in my head. Maeve just wants to like give them freedom, and she just wants she's like Morpheus. Only instead of waking up humans, she's making oh, up machines. Good, good. I, I like that. Like I like that. Teddy yes. is a good guy. Teddy's the good guy, and then Dolores just wants to kill. She's humans. Neo. She wants to kill humans. Mm-hmm. Teddy wants to like protect. I think and it's not that he wants to protect them. I think that his job is going to be to try to keep humanity while they become vicious. I think he's right. going to try to be like, guys, wait. We don't have to fight them. We can work with them because he loves, he's programmed to litter. His whole thing is just to love Dolores. That's it. That's his whole programming is Dolores. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's important. I feel like he's going to become bigger because the character was always in the background and and MTV. Oh my God. And HBO likes to do that. They like to leave characters in the background and then bring them to the forefront when they're really important. Yes. I just love it. I think it was, I mean, everything was on point and it was like, I, and I also think the one woman is going to end up being a machine. Like the um the one the one doctor chick that's she's not kinda a doctor. Hanging... She's uh she's on the board though. Oh yeah, the board representative. She yeah, I forget she's her hanging name. out with the main writer all the time. She was on Veronica Mars. Yes, and, and she was in Apollo. I Creed. loved her. Love her. I think she's going to end up being a robot. Reason being is he said, "Is there anything else?" And she kind of stopped. And then she's like, "No," and left. I just I think that was not done there on were, accident. And that wasn't the only by time. Accident. Excuse me, that was done by accident. That wasn't the only time too. There were a few times and. You can tell that the writers on the show, the directors on the show, everybody on the show is so on point. Mm-hmm. All right, this is in the school of good HBO shows, mm-hmm. like elevated IP HBO shows. Better than her, her, um, her movements are very spastic at times. Like they're very rigid, or they're she's very too rigid, twitchy like at too... times. She almost looks, surreal to a point. The other thing is I love is like when the writer goes downstairs to find. I'm gonna feel like such a douche if it turns out she's got like Parkinson's or something. Um. Well. We don't know that. Yeah, we um, didn't know that about Michael J. Fox. So. Um, I love when the writer goes down to like the warehouse and he opens it up and there's no one there. There's no like, one. Oh, yes. And, and the man in black, I like how he starts laughing because I think he's crazy. I think he's just snapped at this point. I actually feel bad for him because he describes how I think he was probably a good guy and then his wife committed suicide and then he went crazy. I don't think he was crazy the whole time. Now, you said that you feel that Teddy is the most tragic character in the show. Truthfully, I feel like Billy is the most tragic character in the show. Um, he should. Uh, all I'm again, saying is they should have gone to Vegas. If like, you've been following the narrative of this story, we've told you that the narratives in this show are non-linear. So yeah. the entire time you're following Dolores's crea- um, her uh, quest to the center of the maze with Billy, mm-hmm. and you're also following the Man in Black. You find out at the end that they're the same character mm-hmm. in. Honestly, I thought that they were like kind of chasing each other, like playing a big old uh, like Benny Hill game. But that is not the case. It's over 30 years in between them. And he just came across by the end as such a tragic character well, I mean, because about, he's so broken. Well, think about and what that's he described. When he turns black, is he's like, you know, he's bad. like, oh, I got married and I had a daughter and we lived a happy, happy life and we were all great. And then my wife committed suicide. My daughter's like, I hate you. I don't think he was actually bad. I think it was my, his wife committed suicide. His daughter's like, you're a douche. I hate you. I can't wait for you to die so I can get all your damn money. Mm. He was like, well, now I'm going to go crazy. Ah. Also, I, he did probably kill his brother in law. But that guy was yeah, an asshole, so he deserved he it. He was. You know, I bet you the brother in law's last thought was we should have just gone to Vegas. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, What's the worst thing that can happen? We steal a tiger, end up on the roof, say hi to Mike Tyson. Get a weird face tattoo? I'm exactly. just saying. I have a demon in me. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Yeah, I want right? that t shirt so bad. But I, I feel like he's the most tragic character nah. because I think that Westworld broke him. I yeah. think he it I don't think that it showed him who he really was. I think it turned well, him into someone he never was. I would never go to that park. I've actually said that several times throughout the show. I mm-hmm. would never go there for a few reasons. One, creepy as fuck. Right. Two, 
you know those machines are all just like one glitch away from killing you. Like that's the thing. That's like, been shown. And that was the point of the story is like yeah. they're one glitch away from killing. And the thing is though, even if they weren't getting humanity, even if they were just machines, machines malfunction. Yes. You're having sex with one of those machines. It probably has to like put on weight so that it's not too heavy. That takes that off. You're crossed. You're dead. Right. Also, think about, really think about what you're doing when you're having sex with a robot. And everyone thinks it would be so sexy. No, when you're having sex with that robot, where do you think the semen went? You're probably just having sex with other guys' semen. That's disgusting. Also, the the robot orgies was gross. I was like, that's gross. They're, yeah, they're, that was a little unnecessary. Real. They're, they're not a, real. That's so creepy to me. It was a little unnecessary. Not even going to lie. So creepy. And also all the shooting of them. Like, I'm sorry. If I was hanging out with Robbie, we went. he's like, let's go to Westworld. And he shot somebody, like, Blake, pouring Blake in the face. Even if they were a robot, I'd be like, how about those divorce papers? Here you go. Although I would want to go if it was, like, just treasure hunting and stuff like that. Yeah. That's that the, would be fun. That's the type of Westworld that I would want to go to. I would want to you know go on those treasure hunts and stuff like that you know i would want to relive the good the bad and the ugly i would want to do something like that but just having sex and stuff the debauchery that that you're seeing so many of these uh guests doing that's not even for me you could just get a real prostitute people could argue we have to pay for that you have to pay forty thousand dollars a day to go to westworld yeah a real prostitute is like 300 bucks down the street i'm just saying and that's a higher class one i'm sorry i think you can get that's one with at least most of her teeth let me explain you can get elliot spitzer's hooker for twenty thousand dollars for a weekend so that's only ten thousand dollars a day as opposed to forty (laughs) thousand dollars a day i'm just saying math you know math it's true so i'm just saying like if you're just going there to have sex with fake prostitutes if you can afford westworld you can afford the nice prostitutes with all the teeth Mm -hmm. so you can just afford a prostitute if that's all you're going there for you can find one they exist Mm -hmm. if you're just going there to shoot people well you clearly in this world elliot or eli roth is probably there so you can just go to that weird country and kill all those people (laughs) <laughs> Why bring robots into it? Because robots are now going to kill us. I think that was kind of the point of the end is yeah. the robots are going to come kill us now. Skynet is a thing. This is like the theme park built by oh. the dude that originated Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Speaking Seriously. of which, Skynet is a thing. There's this creepy new thing called Google Home. I'm telling this to like warn you people. There's this creepy thing called Google Home that they're trying to make it seem really great. That is Skynet. Do not get Google Net home in your house because it's like google can you turn on the lights and google's like of course i can google can you tell me if it's raining of course it is google are you gonna murder me absolutely i am that machine controls your heat your electricity and your gas and it does not yet have the soothing voice of pierce brosnan so not in this house no no i'm being dead serious like that thing actually you can hook it up to control everything in your house yeah oh i'm aware that thing's gonna become sentient and kill you guys with uh, carbon monoxide that thing is so fucking creepy that is Skynet. And the fact that they're trying to sell it and people are probably buying it, when it turns around and kills you, I'm going to make fun of you, but I'm going to more be pissed. I'm going to dig up your dead body and slap you for bringing the robot apocalypse. Seriously, Don't you're too that. lazy just to use a remote control? Yeah, like You've got remote controls you? that remote control your entire like, home, oh, and you now can, you need to voice activate oh, the shit? Oh, you can call it from your phone, and it can have all the lights on for you. How fucking lazy are you that you can't, like, turn put your fucking lights on a timer? There's home automation. Timers exist. There's home automation that you can do on your laptop, tablet, yeah, your no, fucking that's phone Skynet. now. That's Skynet. I don't like that. There's literally cheap $10 timers you can get. Crank, crank, crank. Mm-hmm. And it turns on, guys. Literally, you just crank it, and it just turns on your lights. None of this Skynet nonsense. <laughs> you can put your lights on timers. That's a thing. You can put your, you can put your heater on a timer. It's, it's okay. True. It exists. You don't need Skynet. So don't buy Google Home. And Google, if you're listening to this, no, uh, you will never bribe me into into thinking it's awesome so. so nerdy nomicon was not brought to you by google home it was not don't no. get it it is skynet no, they did not um, but sponsor anyways, us Westworld here. is so incredible so my theories for next season yeah well this is what i want to see because i don't actually have theories what i'd love to see is i'd love to see um what i was saying about like people against del rose i feel like there would be human rights groups that would be against this place oh you'd know that there are like there'd be people who are like because the thing is you in all the parks, because it's implied there's a lot of parks, like yes. several parks. Yes. A robot has had to malfunction at some point. But the other thing is, and it's, and I think they kind of never addressed it, is, okay, so the human, the host can't hurt the humans, but humans can hurt other humans. So what's stopping a crazy person from going there and just murdering other humans? Because mm-hmm. the host can't stop them. The hosts have no and ability I'm, to I'm harm I'm pretty people. sure it was also implied that human deaths take place in Westworld from time to time anyway. Look at... Uh, Billy with his brother-in-law. Yeah. I'm, I'm relatively saying, sure he killed Logan. that, like, people have been murdered. Right. So my big thought is, the other thing is they never really established how you 
tell the hosts from real humans. So to me, it was kind of like, what if you think someone's a host and you shoot them in the head and it turns out, oh, this was actually a real, or you think someone's a host and you rape them, turns out they were a real person. Yeah. Like, oops, sorry. Yeah. My bad. Um, because they're supposed to fight back. That's the other thing is like, so how would you know? So I feel like so, at some point, in this, so I feel like there'd be a whole bunch of people that'd be against it. So that'd be a cool storyline, trying to see people like sabotage it, trying to take it down. Mm. The other thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see um, the plague kind of, the plague of robots kind of go through the parks and seeing people have to... Have now see, to fight, I would love to see have that. Have to see people fight. Yes. Like, I'd like to see, another thing I'd, I really would like to see, and I think it is happening is i'd like to see all the same people just in other parks i feel like they didn't buy they didn't build a bunch of different robots they probably have a dolores in every single park like they probably have a dolores in westworld and then a dolores in samurai world and then a dolores they probably just kept the same models and just put them in different parks now see i think that would be absolutely so how brilliant cool i would love would it to be see that to be like we go to like future world and like dolores or evan rachel wood maybe a different name but they probably right. call her like dolores too. it's like a right. moon princess and then they go to like i don't know caveman world and she's like Westeros world. And she's like Cersei. Um, no, but like how cool would it be to like if you go to like medieval world and she's like a princess or you go to like, I don't know, Roman world and like Teddy is Caesar. Yes. So you could have oh, the same man. Actors. And the thing is because I feel like the same code is traded between them. So like Dolores 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 have the same code. So Dolores 1, the one who has the Wyatt project, can just go to the other Doloreses and code them and be like, oh, these violent delights have violent ends. And that triggers all of them and then they all go crazy. Like that's oh. what I think was probably going to happen. We live in the world of Bluetooth. Maybe she can do it just from Westworld itself and just upload her consciousness so that would be really remotely. Cool. And I'd like to, instead of following the people we followed this season, I'd like to see new actors come in and see like a person having to get out. Like a random like security guard having to get out. Like, and that'd be a cool as hell season where like they have to get out. And then you could also see the robots kind of arguing of like, aren't we better than them? Like you could see like the Teddy character being like, don't, this is a, this guy did nothing to you. Like he's helped mm. you. Let him out and have them have them have to find humanity that way. Like, do we show mercy to the humans? Do we kill humans? And then like have the character of like a Teddy be like, if we murder them, we're not better than them, and they can't come back. And then have the character of Dolores be like, we have to get rid of them. We are the gods now. And then have Maeve be like, I want to find my daughter. But it turns out she does find her daughter in like I don't know, we'll say uh, Roman world with her double taking care of it. Like, how much would that fuck with her mind? Because her whole cornerstone would then be over. Man. How to... very Romero of you, first off. And secondly, I want to see but this like how, se- second season. How... HBO, you ne- are you... Are you listening to this, HBO? We need to we need to like link how, them and be like, listen to this episode. But like, how interesting would fuck, it be? That's so no, but good. how interesting would it be to see like so Maeve, who you follow this whole time, and she fights to find her daughter, and she mm-hmm. finally gets to Park One, Sector Fifteen, and you see her daughter, and she goes to run to her daughter, and then her daughter runs to her, but like a different version a different of her. version, and of have her. her be like, yeah what the hell and have her be like, I'm sorry, did you think you were the only one? And then have someone be like, did you think you were the only Maeve? Do you think we created? There's 17 parks, with each with 2,000 hosts. You think we'd created 2,000 different people? Ain't no. nobody got time for that. Ain't got nobody. Because the other thing is, the reason my theory is that is if you go into um, Ford's office, he had the molds of everybody behind him. There was mm. a Dolores mold. There was a Maeve mold. They were behind I, him. I got the, the impression wall. that that was just the original host, but at the same time, that would be. Why would they keep creating new people? I exactly. Mean, when you've got the molds already. Now, you could argue, well, one samurai world, so they probably have Japanese people. Okay, fine. But there were Japanese and Chinese and Asian people in the parks. So they would just yes. make them the originals. Yes. And I'm sure, like, you know, okay, so maybe they have just Asian people in samurai world. But if you have medieval world, why would you need to write new hosts? Like, there's going to be white people in medieval world. So just use the same Or you even people. brought one up fantasy world. Fantasy world. You can have any. You can hang you with want. smog and shit. But that's you know? what I'm saying. You can have any race you want there. So I mm-hmm. feel like, even if they don't necessarily look exactly the same, what they could do is they can change the actors. Star Wars world. You could have Teddy be an Ewok. Okay, adorable. But point of the matter is, I think that would be such a cool of like, who are you if you're not the only one? I feel like that could be like a really cool thing, a storyline for like, if you have to, like Maeve has to like, come face to face with her own and be like, okay, pasta. But first and foremost, somebody needs to call John Connor is my basic. Point. Oh, absolutely. Somebody needs to call John Connor. Absolutely. So. I, seriously, this this show, I have not, I fe- I've not felt this way at watching the season finale of a show since probably the first season of Daredevil. And before that, it was the first season of Game of Thrones. This Fuck this Game show has gotten me. You know what? This, this is show better has than Game of me. Thrones. There's actually a lot of characters. 
they didn't just hot cast the same white guy in every single row. Because I thought Jon Snow and Rob Stark were the same person for like the first two episodes. I was oh, like, I know you did. No, you thought that even more than them were the same person. I literally, Theon Greyjoy I thought the was, end was li- them too. I was like, yep. are these all the same person? Like, did they just cast? Although, weirdly, the guy who played the main um, uh, Desperado looked yeah. just like Kit Harington. He, he did. He looked like he really Mexican did. Kit Harington. I'm not trying to be racist. I actually don't know the man's ethnicity. So I'll just say Hispanic John Snow. I think he is Mexican. They're like from Mexico. I think he is. Or he too, might be honestly. Colombian. I'm sorry. This makes me sound terrible. I will look it up. But he looks just like John Snow. I'm like, did they really have to cast that guy? Like, it's HBO. I thought man. it was Kit Harrington for a second. I'm like, is that Kit Harrington? But it wasn't. It wasn't so the Kit thing, the thing about HBO series is, lots of times you need to wait until the first season is done to properly review a show, mm-hmm. because they can trick you. They can fuck with you a little bit. I mean, they did that to me with Rome. Mm-hmm. Started out great guns. I loved it. And then by the end of the season, first season, it, it was just not good. Same with Dead, uh, Deadwood. This, is, this one's going to make me unpopular with a lot of people. Six Feet Under, man. I did not care for Six Feet Under. It had brilliant acting. It had acting. the best finale of all time. It had probably the best finale of any show I've ever seen because it was so perfectly wrapped up in a way that was true to the show. Mm-hmm. I mean, I the show did a lot of things right, but overall, I've seen it. I'm done with it. You know, Game of Thrones, I'll keep watching probably till the day I die. Westworld, I'm getting the Blu-ray. I'm getting I, the special edition honestly, Blu-ray. Though, I have it's to say, absolutely phenomenal. Not meant to this has nothing to do with the rest. It has to do with Game of Thrones. I have a feeling the ending of Game of Thrones is going to be very, very unsatisfying. I think you guys uh, are going to get what you want. I think it's going to wrap it up well. But George R. R. Martin himself and even the producers of Game of Thrones said, if you think you're going to be happy at the end of the series, you are not paying attention. Like, yeah. you'll be happy if, like, two of the characters... I think, honestly, I think they're all going to die. I think the White Walkers are going to get them all and kill them. And you know what? That would be the type of ending that I a think, show like this No, I think that would be the only way it would end. Because if any of them are left alive, then it's like... I just feel like I think they're all going to die. I think it's going to be same with um not that this is HBO, this is AMC, but same with The Walking Dead. I think they're all going to die. Yeah. There's no other way for those shows to end. Well, how can Game I of agree. Thrones end? And they all lived happily ever after the end. That's that's not the the world of Ice and Fire. I that, mean, that is not going. to I happen. know how it's going to end. They're going to get the, the they're going to get the One Ring to Mordor. Jon Snow is going to start controlling the spice. It'll be fine. <laughs> I I'm a huge 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 fan of Game of Thrones and even I have to admit it basically is Lord of the Rings mixed with Dune. Do, they even use yeah. some of the same like the name sounds similar. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. I mean John is going to be is probably going to end up being um, I'm a little bit surprised we have not met any of the House of Trades in West. No, I mean John Westeros, Snow is clearly so, yeah. is probably going to end up being the um that that bringer the of light Qua- guy. The Quasar No, 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 the the guy what's his name in Game of Thrones? So oh, uh, Azor Ahai. He's going to be that guy, which is basically just the Quasar Tetarak. Like he's, I mean, seriously, look at the two yeah. legends. The Muad'Dib. I, I, I like George R. R. Martin. I think he's a genius. But he clearly read Dune when he wrote that. Like I, I Oh, mean, unquestionably. When I was reading The Prince... My that, name is a killing word. When I read The Prince That Was Promised, a.k.a. The um, the Lightbringer, a.k.a. that guy... It's, Azor Ahai. It's just the, it's just the Quasar Tetarak. Her- yeah, it's Muad'Dib. It's, it's the Muad'Dib. Paul Atreides. It's, it's Paul Atreides. It, he basically was just like, no one has read Dune, right? It's fine. I'll change the name. It's fine. Kids don't read. The only ones who have read it is, you know, the people that have watched that David Lynch movie. And they changed everything. We're good here. We're good here. Why are you giving him a British accent? He's from Jersey. He'd I more, don't know. He'd be more talking like, no one's going to listen to this. And if they do, they're going to end up in the Pine Barrens. So, because he's from Jersey. Where's the Gabagool? Where's the Gabagool? Yeah, that's George R. R. Martin's house. He's like, you know what? Keep telling me to finish this story. Come on, I have guns. Have you guys ever seen The Sopranos? Keep telling me to finish. Everyone seems to think he's like British. He's from Jersey. You know what happens to him? Not Jersey, England. Jersey, America. It, and he's got that little... He's got the look of Santa with the little train conductor know, hat. You think that guy doesn't know half the mafia in like New Jersey? Keep telling him to finish the damn series. Well, Keep ap- telling him. After the Sopranos came out, the Jersey mafia is like four guys in a room. Well, he knows all four of them. <laughs> because they all got locked up by bragging about how they were the Sopranos. He's like, "Keep telling me." I bet you, I swear to God, he's probably like, "Keep telling me to write, bitches." Mm. You will end up in the fucking Pine Barrens with that fucking Jersey Devil. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the hockey team. I feed Game of Thrones fans to that thing. I actually own the Jersey Devil, not the hockey team, the mythical creature, and I feed Game of Thrones fans to it. That's probably what happens. Oh my God, did I just solve Game of Thrones? I still love the threat that he gave. If you keep on asking me about that book and keep on thinking I'm going to die, I'm going to kill Tyrion. Yeah, also, 
I he's love like that. 70. I get he's not in the best of shape. He's not he, even 70. That man is a millionaire. You don't think he has good health care? Like, yeah, I understand. Like, he's he is a little bit overweight and he's in his seven, he's in his 60s. The average age of a man in this country is like 80 something. And most of us are overweight. And he's a millionaire. You think HBO doesn't have the best health insurance for that guy? That guy's going to live through like seven heart attacks. They're just going to put him in a back to tank until he's done with the final book, man. The only way that guy is going to die is if he gets stabbed by a Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the only thing that's going to kill Fucking him. Fucking Lenin style, dude. Like, you didn't finish it on time. And they're going to shoot him and he's going to be like, oh, You said 2014! The irony, I mean, killed Caesar style like Jon Snow. And then he's going to fall. That's the only thing that's going to kill him is a Game of Thrones fan. Like, stop being worried about his bacon intake. He's fine. He's rich. But it's not bacon. It's the gabagool. It's the gabagool. I forgot. I forgot. But anyways, that has nothing to do with Westworld. Point of the matter is, Westworld was amazing. If you haven't watched it, get HBO Go. Watch yeah. it. It's incredible. They've got free I trials mean, out. You can bang this shit out, was, man. It's, this it's is a must so watch. so good. Must watch. Everything was good. I mean, obviously, there are things I didn't love. I don't love that they didn't completely, like clear up the the narrative like i'm still not exactly I'm fine with that. sure what happened where i'm fine um, with that and i do kind of wish i knew what happened to logan like it's implied he's dead or he went crazy but yeah i i feel the same with you about logan but you know i i don't need everything wrapped up with a nice pretty bow on I, it because season two man you have to keep no, them I interested to, i know and the other thing is there's actually two things that i i'm really curious about two yeah. loose ends that i really need to bring up number one i want to see the other parks because there's clearly other parks is this happening in all the parks or is it just westworld because it seems weird that like and did Arnold and um, Ford only build Westworld and then they just built other worlds based on that world? Because he didn't really seem to have anything to do with the other worlds. But we don't see him all the time. No, we do not. So maybe Westworld was the first and then they've just built out, number one. Number two, yeah. the writer and that one woman did go and find Abernathy, the uh, Dolores' first dad, and we didn't see him again. So is he on the train somewhere? Is he somewhere? I don't think he is. I think they I think may have got to him first. But is the programming already in him that right there is exactly why i did not think that they were taking place at the same time i think that there is a stutter in between them one way or the other but, but i don't think it's like a 30 year i don't think it's a 30 year gap i think it might be like a day or two gap. may brought bernard back no i mean i think that it's a day or two time lapse i don't think it's like no, a 30 I think year that's why he went down was to go get abernathy because she's like you have to go don't you have something to do and he had to go get abernathy to put him on the train so it had to happen at the same time. I think oh, I think Maeve got right. to Abernathy first. You're right. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I think, All right. I think Maeve got to Abernathy first. You're right. You're the right. The thing is, the writer might have already put the programming into him. He just doesn't know what it's for. Um, but I still think she's a robot. I just, I just think she is too. Of the, I mean, there was a few clues where it was like, like when he asked her, is there anything else? She kind of stopped and went blank for a second. And then mm -hmm. she moved really weird. So I'm like, I just don't think that was... If it was just an acting choice, I feel like that girl is too good of an actress. That was too weird of an acting. Like, it was I agree. too awkward of an acting choice. Like, it wasn't like he cut her off and she was thrown. It seemed more of like, it was like a code word. Like, do you need anything else? And she was like, I do not need anything else. I'm going to leave. That's now. what I mean. She was very, very um, disjointed. Like, when she was... Almost like, yeah. robotic. Well, she was a lot mm -hmm. like Bernard, who you don't yeah. know is a robot. And a lot of his... He had weird stuff going on, too. Because when you saw the normal people... They were normal. Like, yes. They, like when you saw the humans, um, they were very human-like, and I just feel like she was a little bit too stiff. She was a Agreed. little too stiff. You know, she was something just a little not right about her. So I think Agreed. she was a robot. Although you made a good point, if she's a robot, then every single African American on that show is a robot. But you know, which is kind of fucked up when you think about it. But mm -hmm. yeah. so, in summary, for Westworld, because we're a little bit up against the clock here, Watch fucking it. awesome. Watch it. D what are you doing? And it's Why like, are you listening to us right now? We're at the end the of the next show. Season, the next season watch doesn't this. come out until 2018. So you have a year. So watch it. Get on this shit, man. It's Get so good. on it. I, I, I loved it. So I, I don't even know what to say. So. Well, I think we've said it all. Watch it. Know. Watch it. Anything else to leave our listeners with for this episode? <clears throat> Um, I don't know. Did I do an emotional? I guess I kind of did a story. You Wars. basically did. I did a lot of emotional runs. I was very emotional today. It, it was quite emotional. I'm basically, very emotional. Your, your entire Westworld was basically one big emotional rant too. Which you know what? I think worked for this show. I just loved especially it. with Dolores being it. one of the main characters and Maeve as well. I think it worked. Very feminist show. This show. And you know what? I'm it really saying? is. Oh my God. Or, I'm sorry. HBO. You did one really great thing. There was not a single rape that we saw. 
Like, thank God, because you because, seem to be a little bit too obsessed with rape. Yeah, and no incest. Oh no, and and um. To be fair, there wasn't really any relationships. There was no gay relationships, straight relationships. There was really no any Not, relationships. Well, Bernard and his boss, the doctor lady that. I guess, but he's a robot, so it doesn't count. Fair but enough. But I have to say, like, there's implied rape, but we didn't have to see it. Yes. So it's okay. And I went into this show actually cringing a little bit because I had heard that there were at least five pretty graphic rape scenes. Not Where'd one. Where'd you hear that from? Online. Oh, there's no rape scenes. There was no rape scenes Unless at all. we watched a different show. There was, I mean, there's an implied one in the beginning. Implied, but I'm, st- I'm not even sure if that actually was a rape. I think that he actually was scalping her. He was trying to find them. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced. A lot of that violence. That was a it was a very violent, incredibly series, violent show. But I'm just so sick. And it's one thing that HBO needs to stop doing. And yeah. they, uh, people have complained about it with Game of Thrones, and even real Game of Thrones fans have been like, "Okay, we get it." Yeah. HBO uh, as uses, a fan of the books, I'm in that. Camp. HBO uses rape as like a go-to drama, but the problem yeah. is they've used it so much in so many shows, it stopped being dramatic. Right. To the point where it's like they even a big point they brought up was like. They're adding it to places they don't need to add it to. And the one thing they're not doing it is it's always man on girl. They're never doing male on male or female on male. That's where Stars has your ass beaten. Because What was that? Black Sails? Outlander. Or? Outlander. Outlander, Thank Outlander you. has a male rape scene, like a male on male rape scene. And pretty graphic one, too. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like I guess HBO started its whole thing with Oz. So I guess they had did enough male on male rape to see. Oh, them. they had six years of that. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like Game of Thrones. There was a like, lot of rape in that show. You'd think that like no man has ever raped a man or no woman has ever raped a man in Game of Thrones because it's only woman on it's only man on woman. And it's like sooner or later, someone's going to get stabbed. And no one ever gets stabbed. You know, after watching Oz, I still can't watch J.K. Simmons in I love anything Simmons. without thinking about him calling someone a prag. Well, I love J.K. Simmons. I love you, J.K. Simmons. Um, but anyways, hashtag get this to HBO. HBO, please listen to this and call me. I will totally write any of your... I will write Westworld. You can you could pay me in fucking circus peanuts. I just want a credit because I love this show so much. Um, Actual circus peanuts or like the little candy ones? The candy ones, you slag! Yeah. Um, but you got your offer there, HBO. I mean, you you have, got your offer I think here. You would probably have to pay me something, like a living wage. But like, I am cheap. The only thing you'd have to provide me with is daycare. Because I have a kid and he's real cute. And, he can be on the show. And I am slutty. I'll help you out with some storylines for next to nothing. Yeah. Man. We just want to be on the next show. Next to nothing. Like, I'm, I'm IP HBO. slutty, okay? Hey, hashtag hire us HBO. Um, hire Nerdy Nomicon HBO. Hashtag. Absolutely. Hashtag that, bitches. All ten of you. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to take us out of it for this week. Yeah. I, th- I think it's time to close the book. Okay. All right. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned tomorrow for another full episode of Rogue One. Also, but I think it's um, Christmas, too. It is Christmas. It's for, our, and it's Hanukkah. Our, and Hanukkah, yes. It's our Christmas present and Hanukkah gift to our listeners. And Kwanzaa, you know, I all know, of them. I think Kwanzaa starts on Monday. Yeah, well, it's a holiday gift for all. Two episodes this week, Yay. back to back. So until next time, I've been Robbie. I might be broke. I don't know. I haven't seen my uh, my storyline. I think it's time to close the book on this. <laughs> <laughs>